Hey, what's up, yogis? I'm actually here in Tel Aviv. This is my pad for, for about a week, which I'm super stoked about. It's a cute little place. I got this neon light action thing happening here. Of course, I got my Netflix and um, a pretty decent bet. And of course, a place to practice or film videos. I wanted to do something a little bit different with these videos. Now, in these videos, I wanted to go over a little bit more uh, specifics and yeah there'll be a little bit more anatomy but I think this is gonna be great if you are a yoga teacher or if you're not a yoga teacher if you plan on doing a teacher training or you're just really serious about practicing I wanted to give something a, a little bit more oomph. okay so to get started today we are gonna cover wrists one of the most common injuries or most common complaints when it comes to the yoga practice is wrist pain. So I'm not gonna go over specifics today as far as outside wrist pain versus inside wrist pain, but we're gonna go over one. First one, we're gonna go over a test. So just testing to see what your range of motion is by itself without leveraging into the ground. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna go over is my go-to for quick fixes right before a yoga practice or shoot or anything. Like that. Again, this isn't about what your teacher, trainer, training taught you was wrong or right. This is just information that I gathered from all the schooling that I did. The way that I was taught yoga, as far as what to do with the hands, is to spread the hands as wide as you can. Now, the idea of this is the wider the surface area, the more stable you're gonna be, which is totally great and sound if you're like a chair or a table or something that is an inanimate object. Now, the issue when it comes to humans, when it comes to us, yogi practitioners, is the more energy that you're expending in this lateral direction, the less you have when you need to push down into the ground. Especially when you're doing something like a handstand, it's only good if you're perfectly balanced in a handstand. But that's not, that's not what really happens. When it comes to handstand, there's a constant micro balancing effect that's happening, same as balancing on one leg. So in fact, what you don't want is necessarily just widest surface area. What you really do want is the ability to have the dexterity, to have the agility, to have the power to push down into the ground with your fingers and your knuckles. So um, in order to do that, it's less of a table widest surface area thing and more about how much control can we have in our flexors, how much range and control can we have in our extensors, and even like rotation and, and all the other stuff, okay? So in order to do that, instead of taking the widest hand that you can, you're actually gonna take a natural wideness in your hand. A natural widening? A natural width? a less widening, a less wide. I am blanking out on English. And these guys singing outside are really loud. I'm trying to make a YouTube video. Okay, anyway, you're gonna take a natural spread in the hands and that way you have the most amount of power, to do this, to push through the base knuckles, to push through the finger pads, sort of like you're playing a piano, as well as put a little bit of pressure down uh, if you're losing your balance in your handstand or whatever, you need to engage other muscle groups in your down dog, whatever, whatever. The ability to control yourself. Let's just get started. So when it comes to the wrists, we're gonna make it real simple. This is my right hand. Now, the palm of my right hand, if I take my hand this way, palm towards my forearm, these are my flexors. So these are my flexors, these are my extensors, okay? So when my flexors engage, my hand goes like this, and when my extensors engage, my hand goes like this. Now, um, the test. A good way to test out what your range of motion is, is you're gonna place your hands together like this, and you're gonna bring your elbows together like so. And you're gonna keep your elbows together and the heels of your palms together at the same time. And you're gonna see how far you can take your hands apart. So, here we go. Now, this is my range of motion. It's pretty good, but then again, you know, I do this stuff all the time. 
but and if it's not this open that's okay it's just where we are in our yoga practice believe me when i got started i was nowhere near as flexible mobile or or even strong in a functional way what that's going to tell you is how far you can handle this extension before you start compensating elsewhere and a lot of times that that tends to be in other places around the shoulder maybe even the head but definitely the shoulder blades are a huge player so i'm going to do it again elbows together heels of the palms together taking the hands apart that's pretty flat so um, if if that's not where you're at let's say you're somewhere around here what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go into the second part of this so if i start off with the back of my hand i'm going to trace down my fingers all the way down to my elbow now if i move out away out away from the center of my body there's going to be this meaty muscle part uh, where a lot of these muscles kind of come together okay now i like to massage this area and you can do it just like i'm doing it right here massaging it with my other hand you could always prop yourself up you want a little bit more power you can use your elbow dig into it you can even like use your chin however you want to get in there and always rub up a little bit closer to the wrist like in between these two bones here you'll find a nice little meaty area and you can get in there as well I'm gonna stretch this out release this but I am going to strengthen this. Now, the way that you do that, uh, you, you can come like this, okay? Palms, do this, and start making little, what would you call this? I don't know, grippy thingies? We'll call this the grippy exercise. We'll call this the, hey, grippy. Nah, I don't like that. I don't know. Do this, you can do this from different positions. This is good because you look ridiculous and I like looking ridiculous. You want to stretch out the extensors while you're building a little bit of heat and brain, body brain connection here with the flexors. You can do this, uh, you can do it inside, you can do it outside if you want. You can get fancy with it. But that's usually one that I like to do in the beginning of practice. Now, let's say if you're coming towards the end of practice, you already did your yoga practice, your forearms are lit up, they're sore, your wrists are feeling a lot of heat, then you can go ahead and stretch out the flexors, which is the same kind of deal. I'm just gonna start from the back of the hand, trace my other hand down towards my elbow now instead of moving laterally, which is away from midline, I'm gonna go medially, which is in towards midline. So I'm gonna go in towards my elbow and there's usually a little bit of a tender area. And then, you know, just show it some love, give a little bit of nursing. You can move in, you move out. That's always good. You can move to the top. I mean, look, even on the eye of the elbow, anywhere along the sides is gonna be great. So, okay, I wanted to keep this pretty short. Uh, granted, it's my first video, but I wanted to come up with something where I could post a little bit more frequently and it might provide a little bit of information. I'm gonna get a little bit more into depth with certain things um, and give you kind of like what I teach in some of my workshops, at least little nuggets of it. You know, when I was first, in my first few years of teaching yoga, I was craving, and granted at the time, YouTube wasn't really huge, right? There wasn't a lot of information out there. And I was always, always on the hunt for finding out different information. And right now we live in a time where uh, you can find a source and then find a secondary source and then find a whole bunch of things and start curating your own opinions or, or expand your knowledge on whatever you want to learn. Yoga, uh, creative flows, it could be alignment cues, anatomy, it could be anything. So. Um, hell, I, I even learned how to shoot video and photography. I built a photography business from YouTube. So I think that's awesome. It just speaks into the possibility out there. So here, I hope this was really helpful. Now, if you want some wrist exercises, I'm gonna throw one of those little thingies, bubbles, 
think it's over here or it might be over here. I don't know. But I'll also link it at the end of this video. And those are some wrist exercises that I like to do that are really helpful. And those build up mobility. Now, again, um, please let me know if this was helpful even a little bit or if it wasn't helpful. I plan on making a little bit more of this and going into a little bit more anatomy. So um, again, let me know in the comments what you want to see. So of course, also, uh, please like, subscribe, and um, if you want to be notified, hit the bell. Uh, I saw a lot of you guys turn on that notification, so I'm really, really grateful. Um, I'm going to keep making these videos while I'm traveling, and um, can't wait to see you on the next video. Peace. Okay, so just to go over, if... Oh, shit. Take four. What's up, yogis? It's Hero, and um, today, TLV Vibes.